How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ The Basics. In this episode we're going to talk about items, weapons, and armors and we're going to make one of each. I'm going to go over all of the tabs and drop down menus and explain everything and that's pretty much it. So let's get started. We're going to look at items first. In this first example we see we have a potion. This is the name tag. This is what's going to display in the game. Then you have the description box right here which you can give it a description and remember you can use text codes here if you want to as well. For the icon, it's a box right here that you can double click and it'll load your icon set. If you wanna change this, it's located in your game's IMG system folder. You simply replace the PNG to change this file. If you were looking for a specific number, when you select an icon box, you'll see a border and on the bottom left corner of the select an icon box, you'll see a number. So that represents the icon number. The next box is the item type and you can select if an item is a regular item, a key item, or a hidden item. And there's two types of hidden items. The use case for the hidden item A and hidden item B will be in situations where you don't necessarily want to use a switch for a game progression. A regular item is going to be what most items are typed as, and it just basically means it's nothing special, it doesn't have any special code, and it will appear in the inventory. A key item, these are typically quest items, and they are basically used for storyline purposes and to stand out a little bit from the rest of your item. The price is going to determine how much is charged when you put this item in a shop. So you can change this number, and it's all relative to how much money you give the party from other means. The consumable box box is a drop down with a simple yes or no. If you say yes to consumable, then when you use the item, it will consume that item and you will no longer have it. If you say no, if we change the potion to be not consumable, what would happen is that potion would still operate 100% the same, except when you use it, it won't disappear. You'll just have it forever. So one potion means infinite potions. So we'll put that back to consumable. The next box is scope. And if you click on the three dots here, you won't see this in MV, only in MZ. You go from left to right and you select your side scope, then your number scope, and then your status scope. For example, if I want this to be on one ally, I'll select ally, then one, on an alive ally as the status condition. So you can't use a potion on a, a dead party member, but maybe you'll make an item that will bring them back and restore them as well or unconditional. If we set it to something like unconditional, then it would let you use a potion on a knocked out character. The occasion is the when this item can be used. If you select always, then it will always be available whenever you have access to the main menu. For example, if you hit the cancel button or escape and you go to your items, you'll be able to use a potion, but you'll also be able to use that potion if in battle, in combat, you go down to your items and select it from there. If you select battle screen, it will only be available in battle. If you select menu screen, it will only be available from the menu screen, not in battle. Never means it will never be able to be used. The next section is invocation and the speed will add an additional amount to the agility score of that item. TLDR, if you add speed to an item, it's going to happen faster. If you wanted to make a skill like a quick hit, you could add 100 speed to it and it will probably go first in the round. The success rate dictates if this has a chance to fail or not. So if you set this to 100% success, that means when the player uses a potion 100% of the time without fail, the player will restore HP by 500. And then repeat will cause the skill to trigger an additional or multiple times. So if you wanted to make a potion that just did the same thing three or four times, you just change repeat to three or four and you'll have a potion that goes and you get all three of those. The next section is TP gain. When you use this potion, do you gain any TP or not? And you can decide there. You can't use a negative number. The next thing is hit type. Now a certain hit will never miss. So if you want to use a skill that will never miss, I know that we talked about making this success rate 100% causing it to never miss. That's its own percent chance for it to never miss. But if we have it being calculated against the defense of a target, then it can still miss based on evasion and agility. And if we set to magic attack, then this can still be reflected by a magic reflection. If we set it to a magic attack, it will also have some sort of reduction in its potency if we call it a magic attack. So making a certain hit is definitely what you want to do for your recovery items. What cases would you use physical attack or magical attack for? If you're making like a shrapnel bomb, you would use physical attack. Or if you did like a, a void bomb, you'd use it as a magical attack or something like that. And then the last one we have is animation. This is just going to be the animation that plays when you use said item. 
If you're using it from the menu, it won't play that animation unless you manually set it up in a common event or an event. However, this animation will be used when you play this item, you use this item in combat. So this is mainly for combat animation, which you can just change it to be whatever you want. The next section is damage. When we were talking about hit types, I referred to like a shrapnel bomb. If you were making a shrapnel bomb, you can use this section, set this to HP damage and give it an element of whatever you want, explosive, fire, physical, whatever combo. If you use some plugins later on, you can even specify multiple elements for it, but we're not going to go into that too much. You can give it a damage formula and the shrapnel bomb would go off and do physical damage, HP damage, and do whatever we said with critical, variance, etc. So the formula right here will determine how much it's going to do. If we put 100, then it will do 100 damage, but it'll also take into consideration critical hit and variance. So with a 20% variance, your skill that does 100 damage is going to do between 80 and 120. Of course, this isn't a skill that's going to do damage. This is a potion and we're not going to leave it at that. The next section is effects. In here you have a lot of things that you can do. You have four tabs. The first tab is for recovering HP. You can recover a percentage of your HP or a set amount of your HP. The same thing for your MP and also for your TP. Except for the TP, it's the same because it starts at 100, so it, you just give it a raw number. On the state tab, you have two options, add state and remove state. You can set percentage chance for those things to happen. Like you make an eye drop potion. You can have it remove blind 100% or an antidote. You can have it remove poison. 100% or you are using it as an attack item that you use on the scope of an enemy and a hit type of physical or something and you can have it deal a new state like bleeding or something so you can have your items deal states to their targets. The next tab is param and this adds buffs and debuffs to the parameters of the characters and targets and enemies. And add buff, you pick the, the parameter and you pick the number of turns you want to last, the same for debuff. And then of course you can have it remove said debuff or remove buffs as well. And then finally on the last tab we have special effects. You can make an item like a smoke bomb or an escape bomb and if you give an item this special effect of escape then when you use it it'll cause the party to just end the battle. The next thing is grow and this is a permanent it increase to a parameter of one or more of your characters. So if you set this to scope of all allies, grow max HP by one, then all of your party members that are set to allies will get a permanent max HP bonus by one. But you can make like an apple of vitality, have it grow your max HP by 50 to permanently boost them. Then you have learn skill. You can apply a skill to be learned when you consume an item. The best time to use learn skill is making books or scrolls or tablets or items that in the storyline they teach the player new skills. Keep in mind when you use learn skill, if the target that's learning the skill does not also know the type, does not have access to the type of skills that that skill is, they'll know that skill, but they technically won't be able to use it because they don't have access to that skill type. So keep that in mind. And the last thing on the effects is common events. You can play a common event. You can have a common event be called or triggered using an item, which is cool. So if we set this common event to one and we go over to common events, whatever we put in here, we don't need to give it a trigger because we're calling it from an item and then we can have it do anything show an animation like anything you want really and that's it for the items let's move over to weapons we won't have as much to explain you'll see a lot of similarity from this tab to the next one in this tab you have weapons you have your name your icon description it's all the same so we move on we have price that's the same the next thing that is new here is weapon type so it's just like item type except with item type you always have regular key item hidden item a hidden item b but with weapons and armors you're going to have different types depending on what you put in your game. This drop down menu will be different for you if you've gone into your types and changed your maximum or adjusted your types. For every new type you add, and I'll illustrate by adding a 13th type, the item type of 13 is nunchucks. We created a new weapon type. If we go to weapons, we can see that nunchucks has appeared on the weapon type. So you can create your own weapon type. We have parameter changes. Now weapons will let you change your parameters by a base amount, but you can also use certain code through different plugins to change the functionality of different weapons. Now on the traits section, we've gone over traits for the most part. Look at one of the previous tutorials if you want to see what all of these do. You've seen these before on the actors and classes. They are the same here. And that's pretty much it for the weapons. Moving on to the armor. All the same stuff that we talked about for weapons, except here we have armor type and it's in the same section except you know, a weapons type it's armor type you can add your own armor types if you want almost everything is the same between weapons and armors except for on weapons you have the animation but on armors you have equipment type so you get to decide in addition to the armor type 
what type of equipment is this now this is different between armor type because equipment type is going to be these slots that the characters have to equip items to themselves like weapons and armors and accessories and whatnot if you want to add or change your equipment types you can do that it's over there in types like the rest of them for every one of these equipment types that you see on this right hand section when you go to your equip menu your character will have a section where they can put on a weapon shield head body accessory and if you add more equipment types they will appear and let the player equip more so if you wanted to give the player earrings you can give them earrings if you want to let them wear necklaces or you wanted to give them a wristband or you wanted to give them a boots section you can do all that in equipment type and you would select what type it is underneath the equipment type for example if it's body armor you can select general armor or light armor and if it's like a helmet you can still select general armor or light armor but then you have the equipment type which would be very different between helmet and the cloth armor so this would would be body and then a helmet would be the head equipment type so if you wanted to make boots then you would go to your types add boots in here add a boots icon name and description and select equipment type of boot you can add traits and if you are using certain plugins you'll have options to put in the note tags for armors as well as weapons and items but that's pretty much it for this tutorial I just wanted to go over one more thing all right and just one last time explaining the damage section of items if you wanted to make like say a shrapnel bomb then you would select this as a regular item give it whatever price you want you would set it as consumable so when you use it it disappears you would set the scope to enemy one or all let's just say all you would set the occasion to battle screen only this would probably be a physical attack you can even reduce its success rate if you wanted to have a chance to fail like a rolling a one on a d20 would be 95 percent success rate you can assign it an animation you can go to damage and here we can look at what you would do for this section so this would be kind of like an hp damage but what other things could we do in this we can have it damage the targets magic points if we set this to MP damage we can have it restore whatever target we want of course if we set the scope to all enemies and HP recover well then we'd be healing the enemy so we don't want to do that same thing for the MP recover the next thing is HP drain you can have it deal damage and then that damage gets sent back to the user of the skill so like if you were making a necromancer that had like a death coil or siphon soul or some kind of skill like that it would drain HP from your target and give it to you that would be when you use that or if you're using a mage who has a lot of spells but they're limited on MP you can give them like a skill that would take their TP and have it do MP drains just an idea to keep your sorcerer fully powered up with more MP the next thing is the element you can change what elements appear in your types you can even add icons to them if you wanted to you select one and it will have interactions based on the element rates that are set on the enemies themselves for this one I would set it to physical HP HP damage and I would give it a formula now the formulas there's a lot to consider with your formula if you highlight your icon over the formula for just a second you'll see a pop-up and it says formula for calculating basic damage the attacker is expressed with a the target is with B both are followed by a dot to enable referencing of the status as shown below for example a dot ATK is referencing the attack power parameter of the user so B dot def would reference the defense power of your target so we're gonna do a simple attack minus D Defense. So however strong we are, we're going to throw in some agility. We're going to throw in some luck as well. So let's do that. Let's do our base strength of 100. We're going to give it an addition of a.atk times 2. So double our attack power. Then we're going to add in our agility a.agi times 2 then we're going to add in a little bit of luck a.luk based luck and then we're going to make a subtraction now a subtraction is going to reduce the damage that has already been added up to reduce the overall or some sort of damage reduction so we're going to use b to reference the target's parameters the stronger and more tankier the target is the less damage they're going to take from this minus b.def which would stand for the target's defense but we're also going to use luck the target's luck to further reduce the damage that they would take with B dot L U K. So now we have a, a nice little battle formula 100 plus attack times 2 plus agility times 2 plus luck minus the targets defense and the targets luck and that's pretty much it so now we've used the damage we've used everything I've gone over the items weapons armors and gone back to items hopefully we've covered everything in this tutorial and if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up like this video we'd appreciate that subscribe to the YouTube channel big shout out to Dejica for sponsoring this video Come hang out with us on the Discord. We'd love to see you there. Until next time, bye-bye.